Hi everyone, I'm Lab Loy Chong from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Departments of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. This is my name in Chinese, Zhong Li Lai. Welcome to the course Seismic Evaluation and Retrofit of Structures, Lecture 3-1. Preliminary Evaluation 2-1 In the previous lecture, we talked about seismic capacity in preliminary evaluation and in this current lecture, we will focus on seismic demand for preliminary evaluation. Here are some terminology. Important factor, I, indicates how important a building is in Chinese, Yong Tu Xi Su. Fundamental vibration period, T, is the period that needed for a building to travel in one cycle. In Chinese, Ji Ben Zhen Dong Zhou Qi. Total dead load W of the structure is the dead load including the weight of the structural members, beam, column, wall, slab, etc and also any material that attach to the structure is also considered as part of the dead load of the structure. And total dead load W, in Chinese, 全部进载重. Design horizontal acceleration response spectrum, SAD, is the acceleration response, is the maximum acceleration response of a structure under design earthquake. And in Chinese, 设计水平加速度反应谱 Seismic force reduction factor for structural system FU due to ductility If a structure possess ductility the seismic design force the design seismic force may be reduced due to its ductility and in Chinese 结构系统地震力折减系数 From that seismic design codes of buildings equation 2-1 we have design seismic force because uh, design code is just the minimum requirement. Therefore, the actual design seismic force may be larger than or equal to the design one. Therefore, V is larger than or equal to I divided by 1.4 alpha Y, SAD divided by FU multiplication times W. If we move 1.4 alpha Y to the left hand side of the inequality, then we have 1.4 alpha y v larger than or equal to i times sad divided by fu multiplication times w. If we further move this term to the left hand side of the equation so that we have a fraction here 1.4 alpha y v divided by i sad divided by fu multiplication w larger than or equal to 1 and we can consider the numerator as the seismic capacity. Therefore, seismic capacity equal to 1.4 alpha y v, and the denominator as the seismic demand I uh, equal to I times SAD divided by FU multiplication times W. If capacity is larger than the demand, that means that the building is qualified. If not, the building is not qualified in seismic performance. Important fact factor I, from Seismic Design Code Section 2.8, all the buildings are classified into four categories. Category 1 is the buildings remain operational after earthquake for emergency response like hospital. Therefore, I equal to 1.5. And in this case, the seismic demand is 50% higher than ordinary building. In category, two, in category 2, a building that contains considerable amount of poisonous and explosive substances, such as nuclear plants, therefore the collapse of this building may induce secondary disaster. Therefore, I equal to 1.5. The design, the seismic demand for this type of building if 50% higher than the ordinary building. 
And in category three, a building is used by the public so that the occupant density is higher, like department store, and the seismic demand is 25% higher than the ordinary buildings. Therefore, I equal to 1.25. And category four, if a building that is not classified as category one, category two, or category three, and is grouped into category four, other buildings like residential building, I equal to 1.0, that means that there's no amplification for the seismic demand of this type of buildings. For school buildings, if a school building is such an ordinary school building, then I equal to 1.25 is classified as category 3, but the building, the school building is used by public so that the occupant density is higher. Therefore, I equal to 1.25. If a school building is used for emergency shelter just after earthquake, therefore, I equal to 1.50. So that from the seismic demand, we have already considered the importance factor I. Then we move to the total dead load W. Total dead load including the weight of the structural members, like uh, beam, column, slab and walls, and anything that attached to the building. It's very difficult to measure the size of the building so that we calculate the weight of the building, so that we induce the total dead load W per unit floor area. Therefore, we just measure the floor area above the ground from the second floor to the roof and estimate the total dead load in preliminary evaluation from the total dead load per unit floor area, small w. For the cases of school buildings, W roof, the unit floor area, the unit dead load, the dead load per unit floor area, w, small w roof equal to 750 kgf per meter square. If for floors other than the roof, WI equal to 900 kgf per meter square, and I equal to 2 up to the floor under the roof. Therefore, from the small w, small w and the floor area A, we can compute the total dead load of the structure. Capital, capital W equal to summation from I equal to 2 to NF. NF is the roof, is the floor under the roof. WI, WI is the dead load per unit floor times AFI. AFI is the area of the ice floor plus small w roof. That's the dead load per unit floor area in the roof times A roof. A roof is the floor area of the roof. Equal to summation from I equal to 2 to NF, 900. Small wi equal to 900 kgf per meter square times AFI. AFI is the floor area of the ice roof. Ice floor plus 750 uh, A roof. A roof is the floor area of the roof. So that when we, once we arrive at the school building, we just measure the floor area. And small w is given in advance. In order to calculate SAD, the special acceleration, and FU, the seismic force reduction factor due to the ductility, we need the information about fundamental period. Because it's, imp it's impossible in preliminary evaluation to build a structural model and do the dynamic analysis and find out the fundamental period T. So that according to the seismic design codes, we have approximate fundamental period. If a building is a steel structure with moment resisting frame and without any other lateral force resisting members such as non-structural rigid wall, shear wall or braces, T equal to 0 0.085 HN to the power 3 divided by 4. And HN is the building height. You count from the base to the roof. Is, therefore, is the roof elevation, elevation from the base. And from this formula, we know that the higher the building height, Xn, the longer the fundamental period.
the longer the fundamental period, the flexible, the more flexible the structure. If a building is reinforced concrete or steel reinforced concrete structure with moment resisting frame and without any other lateral force resisting members, such as non structural rigid wall, shear wall, or braces, then according to seismic design code equation 210, T equal to 0 0.07, Hn to the power 3 fourths. Therefore, with the same building height, Hn, steel structure has a longer fundamental vibration period than T, uh, but than a reinforced concrete structure. If we go back to the previous line, for steel structure, the coefficient here is 0 0.85. For reinforced concrete structure, the coefficient here is 0 0.07. Therefore, if we have two buildings with same height, the steel structure has a longer fundamental vibration period than reinforced concrete structure. If a building with a, with a lateral, uh, lateral force resisting member, such as rigid wall, shear wall, or blazing, the fundamental vibration period, according to the seismic design code, equation 2-11, can be approximated by this formula. T equal to 0 0.05, Hn to the power 3 fourths. If we compare with the previous two previous lines, the coefficient here is 0 0.05. For reinforced concrete structure without any lateral force resisting member, the coefficient is 0 0.07. For steel structure without any lateral force resisting member, the coefficient is 0 0.85. Therefore, steel structure without any lateral resist resisting members the has the longest vibration period. And reinforced concrete structure without any other lateral force resisting member is the next. And the this is the one with lateral force resisting member. Therefore, if a structure has a lateral force resisting member, the funda is more stiff. Therefore, the fundamental period is shorter. For school building, the Along the corridor, there are openings for doors and windows. There are not that many walls. Therefore, the fundamental vibration period can be approximated by reinforced concrete structure without any other lateral force resisting members. Therefore, T equal to 0 0.07 according to equation 210 of the seismic design codes. Transverse to the corridor, there are partition walls, therefore the, the fundamental vibration period can be approximated by a structure with lateral force resisting members. So that T equal to 0 0.07 Hn to the power 3 fourths according to seismic design code equation 2.11. So far, for the seismic demand in preliminary evaluation, we have already talked about I importance factor, W total dead load of the structure, and we move to SAD, the design special acceleration for site class 1, 2, or 3. The design special acceleration can be completely described by two parameters. One is SDS, the other is SD1. From SDS and SD1, we can have the corner period, T0D, equal to SD1 divided by SDS. Once we have T0D, we can divide the design special acceleration into four segments, from 0 to 0.2 T0D, and from 0.2 T0D to T0D, and the third segment, ranges from 2.0D to 2.5T0D and the fourth segment is the period longer than 2.5T0D. The design special acceleration is a function of fundamental vibration period and damping ratio zeta. 
But in this case, for design special acceleration, we fix the damping ratio equal to 5%, so that the design special acceleration is reduced to a function only of to a function of only the vibration, vibration uh, fundamental vibration period t. And from design uh, seismic design code table 2-5a, we can have this formula. And from this formula, we can draw, we can draw the design spectral acceleration as a function of fundamental vibration period t. Therefore, the design response spectrum is determined by two parameters. One is SDS, is the design special acceleration of the site for short period structure. Therefore, in this range, is considered as short period. Another parameter is SD1, is design special acceleration of the site for one second period structure, SD1. And we use one second as a representative period in the range, medium to long period. And T0D is in the boundary between short period and medium to long period. Therefore, T0D is called the corner period between short and medium to long period. When T equal to T0D, if it is calculated from the left-hand side to the left of the pawn, SDS is, is equal to SDS. If it's calculated to the right to a to the right side of the pawn, then it's calculated as T S D1 divided by T zero D. Therefore, if we move T02 to the left hand side of the equation and SDS to the right hand side of the equation, then we can have the relationship between T zero D and the two parameters. T zero D equal to S D1 divided by SDS. Therefore, T0D is not an independent parameter. It depends on the two parameters, SD1 and SDS. Once we have T0D, and we can divide the special acceleration into four segments. One, two, three, and four. Considering the first segment, SAD equal to SDS times 0.4 plus 3t divided by t0d. It increases from 0.4 SDS to SDS linearly. When t equal to 0, SAD t equal to 0. SAD equal to 0.4 SDS. When the fundamental vibration period is very, very short, approaching to 0, that means that the structure is so rigid, so that the structure moves with the ground, Therefore, the structural response is the same as the ground motion. Therefore, special acceleration, that's the maximum acceleration response of the structure, SAD, is the same as the peak ground acceleration. Therefore, 0.4 SDS is the peak ground acceleration we call effective peak ground acceleration, or in short, EPA equal to 0.4 SDS. And the unit is G. G stands for the gravitational acceleration. And then we move to the second segment. The second segment, when T is larger than or equal to 0.2 T0D, less than or equal to T0D, SAD equal to SDS, SAD equal to SDS. Therefore, the special acceleration is constant. When the fundamental vibration period, T, lies between point 2 T0D and T0D. The special acceleration, SAD, is constant. Therefore, we call this region as a region with constant special acceleration. Therefore, in this region, between point 2 T0D and T0D, it can be called as short period range or, a period, or the period range with constant acceleration. Then we move to the third segment, T0D, when T is larger than or equal to T0D, less than or equal to 2.5 T0D, SAD equal to SD1 divided by T, the special acceleration in decreases with time, 
and inversely, and inversely, and inversely proportional with the vibration period T. SAD is the special acceleration, and SVD is the special velocity. SAD can be computed equal to omega SVD. If we move omega to the left-hand side of the equation, so that we have FVD equal to 1 over omega SAD, and omega equal to 2 pi divided by T, therefore SVD equal to T divided by 2 pi SAD. If we substitute this relationship into the equation, SVD equal to T divided by 2 pi SAD, and in this range, SAD equal to SD1 divided by T, T and T cancel out. So the SVD equal to SD1 divided by 2 pi in this period range. And the unit for SD1 equal to G times second. Therefore, in this period range, SVD is constant because SD1 is constant. Therefore, when the fundamental vibration period T lies between T0D and 2.5 T0D, the spectral velocity SVD is constant. So that we call this region as a region with constant spectral velocity. Therefore, for the region between T0D and 2 pi 0D, we can call it medium to long period range, or we call it a region with constant acceleration, constant spectral velocity. When the fundamental vibration period T equal to 1, T equal to 1, the special acceleration SAD equal to SD1. Then we move to the fourth segment, SAD equal to 0.4 SDS. When the fundamental vibration period is longer than 2.5 T0D, the design special acceleration is constant and equal to 0.4 SDS. In general, theoretically, the longer the vibration, the fundamental vibration period, T, the lower the special acceleration. That means that the special acceleration keeps decreasing as the fundamental vibration period increases. However, if the fundamental vibration is very long, then the special acceleration will be very, very small. That means that we don't have to consider any earthquake effect. It may not be that conservative. Therefore, to be conservative, the lower bound is said to be 0.4 SDS. Therefore, there's a lower bound for the special acceleration. For the reason to be conservative. As we mentioned before, the design spectrum for site class 1, 2, or 3 is completely determined by two parameters. One is SDS, the other is SD1. And SDS is the design special acceleration of the site for short period structure. It depends on the seismic zone, the fault distance, and site classification. Therefore, SDS equal to FA times NA times SD, SSD. SSD is the design special acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure. It depends on the location of the site. And NA is the near fault adjustment factor for period with constant acceleration. And it depends on the distance of the site away from the fault and A. And FA is the site amplification factor for period with constant acceleration and it depends on site classification where the site is hot, soft or ordinary. With similar argument, the other parameter SD1, the design special acceleration of the site for one second period structure. It depends on seismic zone, fault distance, and site classification. Therefore, SD1 is equal to FV times NV times S1D. 
S1D is the design special acceleration for seismic zone for one second period structure. We use one second to represent medium to long period. And S1D depends on the location of the site. And V is the near fall adjustment factor for period with constant velocity. Constant velocity, it depends on the fall distance of the site away from the fault. And FV is the site amplification factor for period with constant velocity, with constant velocity, and FV depends on site classification, where the site is hard, ordinary, or soft. And from a seismic design code table 2-1, and the administration unit of the site, we can look up the table to find SSD and S1D. SSD may be 0 0.8, 0 0.7, or 0 0.6, or 0 0.5. It depends on the location of the site. And S1D may be 0 0.45, 0 0.4, 0 0.35, or 0 0.4. It depends on the location of the site. Therefore, the design special acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure, SSD, for one second period structure, can be looked up from tables. That's table 2-1, according to the administration unit, which town, city, or district, where the site locates. So that from this table, we have SSD and S1D. And here's the distribution of SSD and S1D. And the red line here is the, is the fault line. In the surrounding of the fault line, SSD is the highest equal to point AG. Surrounding to the fault line, S SSD is the highest equal to point AG. And the next one is the white one. 0.7G, and then followed by the blue one, 0.6G, and the last one is the green one, 0.5G. Similar for S1D, in the surrounding area to the fourth line, S1D is the highest, equal to 0.45G here, and 0.45G here, the next one is the white one, S1D equal to 0.4G. And the next one is followed by the blue one, 0.35G. And the last one is the green one, with S1D equal to 0.3G. And this figure is taken from the seismic design code figures C2-2 and C3-3. And so far, from the location of the, from the, location of the site, look up the table in the seismic design codes, we have SSD and S1D. After considering SSD and S1D, we move on to consider the near fault effect. Near fault assessment factor for period with constant acceleration NA and period with constant velocity NV depend on the distance of the site and the fault. If the distance is so far, near fault effect is not necessary to be considered. So that the adjustment factors equal to 1, and the closer the fault distance, and the higher the factor. And then we take Chalong Pu fault as an example. If the distance R in kilometer is larger than 12, that means that near fault effect is not necessary to be considered. You don't have to consider near fault effect. Therefore, the assessment factor Na mv equal to 1. When R becomes less and less, that means that the site becomes closer and closer to the force. The factors become larger and larger. Therefore, the near force effect becomes more and more significant. And this table is taken from the seismic design code table 2-4-1. So far, we have considered SSD, S1D, NA, and NV. Then we move to the FA and FV, the site amplification factor for period with constant acceleration, FA, and period with constant velocity, FV, 
depends on site classification. If the site is hot enough, site classification factor FA and FV equal to 1. Therefore, we use hot site as a reference. The softer the site, if the site becomes softer and softer, then the amplification factors becomes higher and higher. From seismic design code table 2-2a, we can have the site amplification factor for period with constant acceleration. And one, two, three here. One is site class one, it represents hot site. Site class two, ordinary site. Site class three, soft site. And SS here, equal to SSD multiplied by NA. Therefore, it's the special acceleration after considering the near fault effect. Okay, we, if you we observe down the column, down the column, site class 1, FA equal to 1.0, site class 2, 1.1, site class 3, 1.2. Then uh, from this observation, you can find that the softer the site, the higher the amplification factor FA. And for site class 1, because you, we use site class 1 as a reference, therefore the amplification factor FA equal to 1, that means that there's no amplification for hard side. And then if we observe the table in a row, the higher the S, FA becomes less and less. That means that when SS is higher, the, therefore the acceleration response of the structure becomes higher and higher. The, the soil may be softened, may be softened due to the high intensity. Therefore, the difference between hot ordinary and soft side becomes less and less. If SS is larger than 0.9, that means that the intensity, the shaking of the, of the structure and the ground is high enough. And the hot side has been already softened due to the inten high intensity. Therefore, FA equal to 1.0 for hot side, 1.0, 1.0 for side class 2 and 3. That means that there's no difference between class 1, 2, or 3 if the shaking intensity is high enough. Then we move to the next table. From a seismic design code table 2-2b, we can have the site amplification factor for period with constant velocity. If we observe down the column, for site class 1, FV equals 1.0, for site class 2, 1.5, site class 3, 1.8. Down the column, the number becomes larger and larger. That means that when the site becomes softer and softer, the factor becomes larger and larger. And if we observe the first row, there's the amplification factor for hard side, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0. That means that for hard side, no matter what the intensity is, the site amplification factor FV equal to 1 because we use hard side as a reference. And S1 is computed by S1D multiply NV. That's the special acceleration after consideration of the near fault effect. The higher the S1, that means that the shaking of the ground or the and the structure becomes high and higher. And even though the sign may be hard, up with under this high shaking, it becomes softened. Therefore, the difference between Hot side, soft side, and ordinary side become less and less as the intense becomes higher and higher. And we take uh, size class 3 as an example, 1.8, 1.7, 1.6, 1.5, 1.4. .1 that means that as ground shaking becomes uh, more intense, more intense, the difference between hot side and soft side becomes less and less. Okay, we have site class 1, 2, or 3. And how do we classify the site to be 1, 
two or three. And according to seismic design code equation 2-5B, 2-5A, a site is classified according to the mean shear velocity down to 30 meters below the ground. Therefore, Vs30, 30, 30 here stand for 30 meters below the ground, S here stand for shear, and V here velocity. Therefore, Vs30 is the mean shear velocity of the ground down to 30 meters below the ground, below the surface. Equal to summation i from 1 to n di divided from summation i equal to 1 to n di divided by vsi. di here is the thickness of soil layer i, and vsi here is the shear velocity of soil layer i. Therefore, di divided by vsi is the time needed for the shear wave to travel through soil layer I. And the summation here is the total time travel by the soil lake by the shear wave through the through the soil from the from the thirty meter below the ground to the surface of the ground. And summation D I here equal to thirty thirty meter because we are only interested in the shear velocity 30 meters below the ground. Therefore, this is the distance traveled by shear wave. That's the time taken by the shear wave. Therefore, distance div divided by the time equal to velocity, and Vs30 is the mean shear velocity down to the 30 meters below the ground. And according to the seismic design code section 2.4, if the mean shear velocity is higher than 270, it is classified as site class 1, that is hard side. If the mean shear wave velocity is less than 180, it is classified as site class 3, that is soft side. Anything between 180 and 270, is classified as site class 2, ordinary site. The harder the site, the higher the shear velocity. Therefore, when the shear velocity is higher than 270, is classified as hard site. The softer the site, the lower the shear wave velocity. If the mean shear wave velocity is less than 180, is classified as soft site. We may measure the shear wave velocity, but sometimes it's not that easy, or it's maybe expensive to measure the shear wave velocity directly. Instead, we can estimate the shear wave velocity by the boring data to the depth 30 meters below the ground. According to seismic design code equation 2-5, for sandy soil layer, VSI can be estimated by 80 times NI to, to the power of one third. NI is the N value of standard penetration test for soil layer I. Therefore, from N value, we can estimate the shear wave velocity. For cohesive soil layer, VSI, if NI is larger than or equal, larger than or equal to two, less than or equal to 25, VSI, the shear wave velocity, can be estimated by 100 Ni to the power one third. And N value is this, is this, uh, can be taken from the standard, can be obtained from the standard penetration test of soil layer I. If Ni is less than 2, then VSI can be estimated by 120 QUI to the power 0.36. And QUI is the unconfined unit actual compression strength, and the unit for QUI is kgf per cm square. The harder the site, the
the larger the value, the n value of the standard penetration test, and the higher the shear velocity. The softer the side, the smaller the n value of the standard penetration test, and the lower the shear wave velocity. Therefore, the shear velocity in, is in positive correlation with the n value from the standard penetration test. For school building, sometimes it is maybe too expensive to have boring hole, so that no boring hole data may be available for school building. Therefore, we may the, the engineer may refer to nearby boring data or site classics classification and reasonably, reasonably classify the site. If no reference data is available, to be conservative, maybe the, the site may be classified as site class 3 for soil site to be conservative. And here is a step-by-step -step procedure to determine the design special acceleration for site class 1, 2, or 3. From step 1, from administration unit, town, district of the site, lookup table 2-1 of the seismic design code to get the design special acceleration of seismic zone for short period structure, SSD, and one second period structure, S1D. Step 2, from the distance between the fault and the site, look up table 2-4-1 to 2-4-7 of seismic design code. It depends on which, which uh, fault is nearby, so that we can from tab 7 tables, there are 7, seven groups of faults. And then to get the near fault assessment data factor, for periods with constant acceleration, NV, and for periods with constant velocity, NV. And then we move to step three. From geolo geological boring, measure or estimate the mean shear velocity down to 30 meters below the ground for site classification. Once we have the site class incorporated with SS, SS equal to NA multiplied by SSD. And then look up table 2-5A of seismic design codes to get the site amplification factor for period with constant acceleration. From site class obtained by step 3 and S1 equal to S1D multiplied by NV. And look up table 2-5B of the seismic design code to get site amplification factor for periods with constant velocity FV. Once we have SSD, NA, FA, then we can multiply all three together to have SSD. Once we have S1D, NV, FV, multiply all these three together, we have SD1 and S. DS is the design special acceleration of the site for short period structure, and SD1 is the design special acceleration for one second period structure, and we use one second period to represent medium to long period range. Once we have SDS and SD1, two parameters, then we can describe completely the design special acceleration SAD by just two parameters. Once we have SD1 and SDS, then we can have T0D, and T0D is the corner period between short period and medium to long period. So that the design special acceleration can be divided into four segments. And with these two parameters, SDS and this SD1, we can have the special acceleration. Once we have the, the fundamental vibration period of the structure, and we know that which segment the fundamental vibration period falls into, then we can compute SAD, the design special acceleration of the structure. 
So far, we have considered the design spectrum for site class 1, 2, and 3. Now we move to Taipei Basin. From seismic design codes table 2-7a, we can plot the design spectrum for Taipei Basin. For Taipei Basin, the soil is so soft that T one second period, one second period, no longer falls onto the range medium to long period. It falls into constant acceleration period or short period. Therefore, we can no longer use SD1, one second period, to represent medium to long period. Therefore, instead of using SDS and SD1, the two parameters for site class 1, 2, or 3, we use SDS and T0D as the two parameters to describe the design spectral acceleration for type A basin. SDS is the design spectral acceleration for short period structure. T0D is the corner period between short period and medium to long period. Originally, the design spectral acceleration is a function of fundamental vibration period and the damping ratio. But for design purpose, we, seek, we fix the damping ratio of the structure to be 5% so that the design spectrum is reduced to a function of only fundamental vibration period T. Once we have T0D, we, de we can divide the design special acceleration into four segments, one segment, two, three, and four segments. And according to this equation, once we know the fundamental vibration period of the structure, we can compute the design special acceleration of the structure. Taipei Basin is divided into is further divided into micro zones. Taipei Zone 1, Zone 2, Zone 3, according to the administration unit in Table 2-6A. And this, is ta this table is taken from Table 2-6 of the seismic design codes. For Taipei Zone 1, SDS equal to 0.6, T0D equal to 1.6 second. For Taipei Zone 2, SDS equal to 0.6, T0D equal to 1.3. For Taipei Zone 3, SDS equal to 0.6. T0D equal to 1.05. As observed from this table, all T0D, no matter Zone 1, Zone 2, or Zone 3, is larger than 1 second. Therefore, for Taipei Basin, we cannot use 1 second to represent the period with constant acceleration or the period, or the medium to long period. Therefore, instead of SD1, we use T0D as the two parameters to describe the design spectrum for Taipei Basin. The softer the site, the longer the T0D, the corner period. Therefore, Taipei Zone 1 is the softest one, softest one. And zone 2 is the next, and zone 3 is the next one. And here are step-by-step -step procedure to determine the design spectrum for Taipei Basin. Step 1, from administration unit, from the administration unit of the site, look up table 2-6A of the seismic design codes to get microzonation. Taipei zone 1, zone 2, or zone 3. And then we move to step 2. From micro zone of the site, look up table 2-6. 2-6 here, 2-6C here. Then we can have the design special acceleration of the site for short period structure SDS equal to 0.6 and the corner period between short and medium to long period, T0D. T0D may be 1.6, 1.3, or 1.05 depends on which Taipei zone the site locates. And then we move to step 3. Once we have SDS, 
the special acceleration of the site for short period structure, T0, the corner period, between short period and medium to long period. Then we can have the seismic design code. And the seismic design code and the seismic spectrum is divided into four segments. In the first segment, it increases linearly from 0.4 ds to sds. In the second segment, that's t is larger than or equal to 0.20d, less than or equal to d0d, sad is constant, equal to sds. In the third segment, that means that the fundamental vibration period lies between t0d and 2.5d t0d. SAD increases, decreases with the vibra vibration period T, and it is inversely proportional to the vibration period T. And SD1 here is a mistake. It should be SDS times T0D. And when the vibration period is larger than 2.5 T0D, then it's the lower bound for the special acceleration. SAD equal to 0.4 SDS. And here are some reference seismic design code of buildings. It's published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. You can download the seismic design code from this link. The other one is structural concrete design codes published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. And you can also download the structural concrete design codes from this link. And here a video for the course, preliminary evaluation 2-1, the English one is the current one, it will be uploaded later, and this is the Chinese version, and for lecture 2, preliminary evaluation 1, this is the English version, this is the Chinese version, for lecture 1-2, seismic upgrading of school building, here is the English version, and 1-1, one -one, the strategy for earthquake disaster prevention, the English version and the Chinese version. And in this lecture, we talk about the seismic demand for preliminary evaluation. So far, we have considered the important factor I, it indicates how important a building is. We have also considered this design special acceleration as AD, that's the acceleration response, maximum acceleration response of a structure under design earthquake. And also the total dead load of the structure, including members and anything attached to the structure. And the seismic demand of the, for the preliminary evaluation will be continued in the next lecture. And all the videos can be downloaded from this channel, and the current one will be uploaded to this channel too. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.